Okay, I think this thing's recording. Hopefully it is. Got a new camera here, so hopefully uh, this is gonna work out fine. Hey, this is Mitch Lamore, KettleCornSupplies.com, and I wanted to take a short video here and have you uh, see my auto store. Now I've got two other videos on auto stores, but none of them are on a Deluxe Pro. So I wanted to show you a Deluxe Pro on an auto store. This is, has been, the Deluxe Pro that is, has been my best selling machine this year. It's amazing how many of these sold. I, I swear if I'd have had 100, I could have sold 100. Um, didn't sell 100, but boy, if I could have made them, I could have sold them. However, that's not what I want to talk about. What I want to talk about is the auto store. And I've made a few improvements and a few little adjustments on it. And I wanted you to see it on an, a, a real machine and, and talk to you a little bit about it. There's a couple of things. One, traditional button here that I have. Turn it on and you lift it up. Okay? And this is what it looks like when you dump it. You turn it off and you dump it. And you'll notice the lid didn't come down. Well, I added this little fast stop here or holder. Normally this is what happens when it flops. But I've got this on here to help keep it down. And it's really easy to do that on the Oshie Plus Pro. On the other ones, I have to use a different clamp. Basically, a hand clamp like this. I can just get at um, Home Depot. And I, put, I modify it a little bit, but it's basically the same. So let me give you uh, a close-up look of what I've done on this. So you can kind of see. Pardon the shake in there while I get myself set up. Okay. This is the Auto Stir. It goes on an 80-quart Deluxe Pro. Now, the main thing that I've changed on this is I've added these handles, okay? You'll see the handles. Now, you may not think that's a big deal, but these handles are actually hollow, so they cool quicker. And also, most of my competitors just have you lift it up with the fingers. And that's kind of cheesy, uh, especially since this lid can get up to 150 degrees, and you still have to use gloves to lift it. I didn't want to have to have you use gloves if you didn't need to, and I wanted you to be able to grab this. It's a little easier to grab too. So let's take a look on the inside here, see what I've done. Oops, I gotta unlatch my latcher, my, my uh, hold down clamp, and you'll notice that the magnets grab that real nice. Now, when I tip this, you'll see these chains, okay? Now these chains are the secret, my competitors I'm sure will steal the idea, but it, you'll notice that this whip right here uh, matches the bump in this. Now I'd love to get rid of this bump, but until then I have to make a die, I made a die, to, move, to uh, make it so I could bend this around and it stays real close. You'll notice, let me pull this around a little bit, okay, it's as close as I dare get it. What these chains do is when the seeds are down here, the seeds can come underneath. If they don't come underneath, they get jammed underneath and then the auto stir won't work as well. So you got to have enough room here for seeds to sneak underneath, but then how does it stir? Once it's popped, then it's not an issue. The, the whip can grab it and move it. But in the meantime, I put these chains and they're offset. So one's closer to the in, inside of the bump and one's further out, this one being further out. So what this does is that when you turn it on, it moves all the seeds on the bottom. Now right there, that's 62 RPMs that you're seeing. Most auto stores are 50, and this is a motor that is very heat resistant, which brings me to my next point. You'll notice that I use a channel. I do not mount the motor box or the motor directly to where the heat source is which is of course the the kettle and being popped and the corn being popped in the kettle you'll see this right here that gray area it's not just paint this is high temperature paint it goes up to 800 degrees uh, your machine will get up to about 150 on top the actual flame and the bottom of the bowl is about 300 um, it can get up to 500, but you're not going to get that up here. By the time it reaches the heat here, it's about 150. 
if you did not have this coating, this would not be able, you wouldn't be able to put your hand on this like you couldn't here. You'd have to have a glove, okay? When I've done this before on my originals that I was using this on, I put my hand on here and it felt about like 80, 90 degrees, kind of like if we were sitting out on a hot sunny day. Hot, but not so hot that I couldn't leave my hand on it. When I put it under here, now this is also painted underneath. All this is all painted with this ceramic coating. Oh, let me let me go back uh, and make one more point. The, one coat is a, a R29 insulation factor. Now you'll see my shop is insulated. Well, you can't see it, but I'll trust me, it is. And that has that regular Pink Panther, uh, what do you call that, um, uh, fiberglass insulation. Not fiberglass, I guess it is fiberglass insulation. But it's that pink insulation you see in most houses. This has more insulation factor than my walls. My R walls have R19, this is R29. And I put on at least two coats. So you're probably getting, I'm not going to say R60, but I'll bet you're getting R45, R R50 out of it. Then you have this channel. Let me show you the channel here. Let me see if you can get in there. You can see the auto stir coming down the auger, going down into the machine, and you'll see all this area here that allows air to flow through. That alone uh, will help keep the, the motor much cooler. Then you add the ceramic coating to it, which keeps it even cooler. And on top of that, the underside of this box that's mounted to the channel is painted with two coats and the inside and the lid are both painted with two coats. So by the time you get to the top here, you could put your hand up here, it would be cold to the touch. Now these holes right here, I add just to add a little bit of, uh, not so much insulation, but airflow, that's the word I want to use. So that way if any gases come up from underneath, it's going to be able to pass through. So overall, this motor is they say 150 to 200 degree temperature motor, which means you could run this all day and so long as it doesn't get over 150 degrees, that motor is not going to burn out anytime soon. But I could almost guarantee, and in fact one day I will be able to, because I have temperature gauges on there and measure it, that you will probably never get this thing heated up even over 75 degrees. I mean, it's, it's going to stay really cold with all that those features I put on that. Anyway, that's the main thing I wanted to show you folks. Um, let me tell you a little bit about more of the, the whip, or actually the, the unit itself. These diamond plates make it look real nice. I love them, but they're harder to clean. So if you want the plain sheet metal, you can, much like you would here on the front. Let's show you here. This, this, it, you can, I can make the whole thing. This is just really easy to clean. You can just spray it with some all-purpose cleaner. And it cleans up real nice. So I can make the auto store with either diamond plate, if you want it real flashy, or if you want it plain for cleaning effect, I can do it that way as well. So let me put this down. Oh, the other thing is you'll notice the conduit here. This is flexible hose conduit. You get 12 feet of conduit, and you're going to use a battery. Now the cool thing about this motor that I have in here, if for some reason somebody wanted your help uh, put the negative on the positive and positive on the negative, it won't matter, it won't burn the motor up because all it'll do is it will, in fact, let me just show you. All it does, see right now it's going clockwise. If I flip it, okay, if I flip these, sorry about that camera, and I turn it on, it just goes counterclockwise. So you can't screw it up. You want it going clockwise though, okay? So I'm just going to leave that there for now. And then say goodbye. Alright, here we go. Okay, should be able to see me now. So, that's the auto store on the Deluxe Pro. Um, the cost on these things is about $9.89 now. That might go up, but I think that's the price I'm going to try to keep it under $1,000. There's so many other features my com competitors don't have. They don't have the strong coating. They don't have the channel here for the airflow to get through. They don't have the box. They don't have my high RPM motor. And they don't have the ceramic coating on the inside. Nor do they have the stop gap in the back or the handles. All those 
excuse me, all those little things make this just a superior uh, auto stir. Now, a couple things to keep in mind when using an auto stir, whether it's mine or somebody else's. Always use mushroom popcorn. I prefer magic mushroom, but any mushroom corn, popcorn, the whip itself would just beat that butterfly popcorn to death. You're going to use less oil than you normally would if you were stirring it by hand. Uh, because the oils stay in here with the lids, you're gonna, it stays in there so there's less oil. You are definitely going to burn it if you use too much oil. So, I also tell people just occasionally leave this thing up or maybe even just leave it up while you're popping. Gases will come through and oil will come up through, but um, it will keep, keep it from burning and get a little more airflow in there. The second thing is use Compound S. It's a gold metal product. You can get it online or you can have your local restaurant supply store order it. It's about a quart size. You only use a half a tablespoon or a teaspoon rather, um, or a teaspoon of it or a tablespoon. Tablespoon, that's what it is. And you put it in your sugar. You use one tablespoon per two cups of sugar. Um, and that'll help keep your sugar from clumping up your popcorn and sticking to the auto store. And it'll also keep your bowl cleaner and it actually helps your product take, taste better. Um, once you start popping with compound S, I don't think you're going to ever go back. So, just in review mushroom popcorn, compound S. Uh, use less oil. Those are the three keys there. The other thing to keep in mind is because you don't hear as much of the popcorn popping, you, it, it'll sound a little different. You're going to have to get used to the different sound. It's a lot quieter. I mean, you can hear, you can hear the motor, and you will hear the popcorn, but not the explosive sounds that you normally get when you're doing it by hand without auto stirs on top of it. All right, what else can I tell you? I'm sure I'm missing something, and if I am. Please give me a call, Mitch, at 360-477-0257. Um, um, I'm in Port Angeles. I'm in about as far northwest as you could possibly be in this country. And if I don't get to the phone in time, it's probably because I'm welding or grinding and I don't hear you, or maybe I'm driving or on a bike ride, uh, I will return your call. And if I don't, call again, but I will do my best to call you back. Okay? All right, Kale Corn Cousins. Be mighty, and we'll shoot for a really good, prosperous spring, and next year we'll do even better than we did this year. All right, bye-bye. Back to work for me. Get this thing popped or uh, packaged up for this cut.